This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the Word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for Spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. Hello, Rim of the Most High God. And welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against mystery of Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 462. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, folks. It's so good to be in here, getting to talk to you. I always feel like it, it is a time where you can get to know us, and, and we sure love on you guys. Um, this last week, you know, there was a lot of things happening politically and all these things. We're seeing the cabinet members chosen. Um, and so I, I really do feel like our prayers are so significant in what I call a pro the beginning process of breaking the, the Babylonian system. Um, you know, we've, I've said this before, I believe we've all been made slaves. I, I personally believe um, by what God told me that uh, there was, was some kind of contract made or something uh, in 1955. I think we're coming to the end of a 70 year period and I believe that it, it's going to be in um, 2025. And so I think what um, we need to do in addition to keeping our, our prayers over the nations, over the governments, um, praying that God would delay World War III for his purposes uh, so the bride can be prepared, the souls uh, can be saved. I think we need to start getting our hearts um, ready for healing and restoration yes. because that's what God's told me all along that that was what I was to pray for to to break the powers that have been, have been so empowered in our nation and other nations uh, through the horrible sins and abominations that have been done that when we can get to the end of this to where that power begins to break then there's going to be an anointing from heaven for the healing and restoration of that and I don't know about you but um we have certainly felt the effects of Babylon breaking us. Yeah, well, the stress in the last four or five years has been pretty, pretty intense. Yes, it has. And, and before that, <laughs> you know, we've been, I feel like we've been in stress for a long time. And God has so graciously, so mercifully uh, just sustained our bodies. I mean, that, I, don't, I don't think it's normal that a person can handle this kind of stress. And I think that everyone's been in an enormous amount of stress. And I think that it, our bodies have paid a price. And so I think that, uh, you know, what Babylon does is it, is it breaks you. It's, it's meant, it was established to break, uh, to make slaves out of people, to, to uh, morph them into what Babylon wants them to be. And we, we can certainly see that. You know, back when God was telling me these things so many years ago, I couldn't even imagine where we would have been today. You know, I was seeing things that I couldn't even understand what I was seeing and, and judgment and different things. And, and now I can see so clearly what was going on. But, you know, if, 
um, if you aren't presented with the picture that we can all see now, it's, it was very difficult to determine what it was. And so um, I have great faith rising up in me that we're, we're going to start seeing soon a huge outpouring of God's healing and restoration. And uh, one of the things that uh, I felt like this week is I, I asked Mike if he would get his older teaching out um, about the potter's field because I can remember that that was such a huge healing point for me. One of the things, uh, programs that they use in mind control programming is, <clears throat> I guess they just call it the potter's wheel. I don't know if it's got a specific name, but in, in my day now, the old days of programming, you were spun. Uh, and, and if you are spun long enough, it is the most sickening thing. It, you get to the point, it's just total disorientation. And they used to use that as a point of making a break, uh, you know, to divide and so that they can program individual parts of, of the mind. And so when he reads um, the scriptures about the potter, that may trigger some of you. And, and sometimes it's even the reading of the scripture, like that that would be the code that opens it up. So I pray uh, in Jesus' name that if anyone has any programming opening up, that the anointing that is upon this teaching on the truth about our Father in heaven as the potter will tear down, tear down mm. that programming. I ask, Father, that there would be such an anointing that it would cause any demonic power that's linked to that programming to flee and start terror, that there could be total healing, total closing of doors open to the kingdom of darkness and complete restoration. And I know that in, in my life, I can, I can tell you, through my life when I would hear, there was a song that was called, I think it was called, the, um, well, I can't remember what it was called. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I can't remember the exact title, but it was, it was saying things like over and over, he molds me and makes me. And, and it, there was something about, I don't know if they used that song or if it was just opening up my programming. Um, but I mean, I would just fall to pieces. Like I'd just, I'd be crying and trying to stop that little girl cry that was in me where I'd go, <gasps> you know how you've heard a little child cry. Well, that was where that was where that was in me. And so this teaching that he does, I believe will bring such, such healing, not only to program multiples, but Babylon's broken everybody. You know, their goal is to break you and, and let you be formed into something that is, was not God's design for you. And so I believe with all my heart that God will release an anointing as he's teaching. Um, and so if you just get your heart prepared to receive that, um, Everyone that's on our, our prayer list is, is about the same. Everything's going well. We've got one new prayer request about a new baby boy that was born. And when he was born, the doctors said that there was going to have to be surgery. And the problem is, is he's, he won't be able to have that surgery until he's uh, six months old. So if you would pray with us, we're just asking God for a miracle. Um, Asking God to sustain that baby and bring peace, um, financial restitution to what this will call, you know, cost them. Because Satan just loves to take a situation and, and hit so many points in your life that you're overwhelmed. And I mean, this would be one of the most overwhelming things that a family could face. And so let's support them in prayer. I know that the peace of God can come in a situation to where... You just can't imagine how you're having peace. We've went through that over and over, that, that peace that mm -hmm. surpasses your understanding will just overtake you. And so let's be holding that family up in prayer and just the other people. Also, Raylan um, is, is fine, but he's going through a series of tests um, to try to determine adjustments as far as his food and different things like that because a lot has changed since his surgery. So if you'd remember him in prayer, we appreciate that so much. Your prayers are making a difference. Your prayers have made so much of a difference that 
our nation now has an opportunity to go forward where I believe before it would have been so difficult to do anything. I think that the powers that were going to be in control were going to be so against um, anything from preaching the gospel to um, trying to help someone that, that needs deliverance. I think it would have been almost impossible. So God in his mercy has provided us a, a better way. I'm not saying we're not going to have some troubles. You can't have a deficit like we do without financial problems. But God can take us through it. So I'm just going to, I'll okay. just comment as we go through. <laughs> well, just a couple of things um, before we get started. Uh, I had a um, good friend, Pastor Neil Peterson, uh, take me through and schooled me on AI and, and, and production and everything. And I was able to, I'm going through uh, probably one of the most uh, commented series that I ever taught on was Rhythmic Boot Camp. And I was able to convert the audio lectures to transcripts and then have uh, it converted over to a basic manuscript. So mm -hmm. it's really going to uh, speed my book writing, especially when I'm That's doing. Help. Uh, so hopefully here in the next few months, we're going to have Kingdom Warrior 2 out. I'm also working on, continue working on Journey Out of Babylon, as well as having one on the Sabbath, because I can mm -hmm. actually take that Sabbath series. And what's so great is back then, you know, I, usually I'm so good about having notes on the computer. I've got notes all the way back to 1980 or 1992 or so. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, with that one, I was, I was doing it on notepads, okay? <laughs> and so I, don't, I didn't even have my notes and all the research I did on that series. Well, now I can just simply convert that to a basic manuscript so the bones are there. Mm -hmm. And so probably in the, <laughs> we're probably going to have two, three books coming out in the, in the next six, seven months. Um, so that, that's kind of exciting. Uh, you know, I always thought I was kind of a, a techno nerd anyway, but I, I got kind of schooled that I've been left behind. I'm still, I was kind of like a 286 guy operating in a, in a high volume Pentium world. And for those that know computers, you know what I'm talking about. And so uh, it's helping with the workflow, which I was glad of because I was really asking God to, to help because it seems like uh, most days <clears> we <throat> feel like the Dunkin' Donut man that meets himself. <laughs> it's true. And so He's it's a like, busy man. <laughs> and so it's like I, I need help. And so I'm, I'm actually able to use some of the technology to help with that. Um, back years ago when I, when I taught on the Potter's Field, uh, one of the things that, that jumped out, kept on jumping at me, you know, we, lot, most of the time when we, we uh, take the Lord's Supper, we always go back to Paul's writings in, in 1 Corinthians, okay? And one of the things that he stressed was, in the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. Okay, that's, that's that beginning statement. Well, the bread is the breaking, okay? And it was done on the night that he was betrayed. And God began to deal with me a lot about how that uh, most of, of us, when we look at vessels, the, that's an analogy used in the Word of God. Uh, Paul uses it in several places. One is if, if, if we will cleanse ourselves of sin, we, we can become a vessel of honor. Uh, one of the things I have found out about Babylon, it loves to enthrall, entice, it also horrifies, and then it mesmerizes. And I added the mesmerization in there because if Babylon can mesmerize you enough, you don't, you don't really see the horror of what it does. Oh, we've seen that. We, we, we've seen that. And Babylon loves to mar the image of God. That's one of the things that happened not only through Nimrod and, and all that happened with Babylon, but it goes all the way back to the garden, that when uh, Adam was formed out of, out of the clay of, of the earth by the hands of Jesus, okay? And he was created in the image of God. When man sinned, when man committed high treason <clears throat> against God, he was, the image of God on the inside of him was marred and replaced with the image of the dragon. Okay? That's one of the reasons why Paul tells us in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 23, where he's dealing with what we call, or 29, we call predestination. He says, whom he foreknew... He also, pre, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. So all of us in Christ are predestined to have that image restored. What we don't realize is everything that Jesus did on the cross for us, as well as his suffering first began in the garden, mm -hmm. okay, uh, with the struggle of, of the, I think the sin nature was beginning to take hold in the garden and, and he, there was, he was under such mental anguish 
that the capillaries in his face broke and he was literally sweating yeah. blood with the struggle of that. Yet in the midst of that, he had the ability to say, not my will, but your be, your be done. Mm -hmm. Well, he, uh, on, on the night that he was betrayed, the betrayal is essential for our healing. Because Mary, uh, most of all of our wounds came because somebody betrayed. Yes. Uh, they betrayed trust, they betrayed love, they betrayed authority, and they betrayed care. And so those that we were supposed to have trustworthy were not trustworthy because of that sin nature. Yes. They, the image of the dragon was there, okay? And they had yielded to it. And there's an interesting statement we find in Matthew 27, starting in verse 3. It said, Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back to 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priest took the pieces of silver and said it's not lawful for them to put it into the treasury. You know, when I've read that, Mary, I always wonder where they got it from. Did they take it out of the treasury? And so they used it to convince somebody to betray innocent blood. And now that they have it back, they can't put it in the treasury. It's kind of like, well, this is one of them things. Because, of the, because they are the price of blood. And they consulted together and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet saying, and they took 30 pieces of silver, the value of, the value of him who was priced, whom they of the children of Israel priced, and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord directed me. So the, Mary, the, the, the concept of them buying the potter's field was prophesied by Jeremiah. It was a divine part of God's plan. Mm -hmm. And when I began studying the potter's field, I began to find that it was a place uh, that the potter not only uh, went to get clay for his, for his craft, but any broken vessels he discarded in the potter's field. The betrayal of Christ paid the price for him to purchase the field full of the broken vessels. Jesus suffered betrayal because and became broken that he might repair the broken vessels of humanity. This is how important this was to God. This, this is why over and over again it says he was betrayed. The Apostle Paul could have said uh, the, the, the night before he was crucified, but he said, no, the <laughs> night in which he was betrayed. He was betrayed. He was betrayed. That is where he began to bear the sins and iniquity. Everything that we see in Isaiah 53 began the moment that Judas betrayed him. Right. So that he could buy the potter's field, so that he could give his life and bear our sins on the cross, so that we might be restored. Yes. Now, when I read about the remaking, which is in, in Jeremiah, I know I'm going to need a Kleenex, son. You get to crying, I get to crying, it's kind of contagious. It's good crying, though. Because we can sense the anointing for healing. Oh, and I, when I look at it, all of the deepest hurts in my life was because of betrayal. Mm -hmm. Every single time. Oh, for sure. Every single time. And remember, the Babylon mars, it cracks, it shatters, it does all these different things to mar the original intent. In fact, in the book that I'm working on, on, on uh, the journey out of uh, Babylon, uh, the prophets say that God got after Nimrod for using bricks. God builds with unhewn stones. Right. And so what the Nimrodian system does that was built in Babylon is they take that unhewn stone and they begin piling miry clay on it and mold it into a brick. And then Babylon takes that brick, Mary, and says... 
that's you. That's the way you were born. That's just who you are. While the, while the whole time, it's hiding who you yeah, are. The treasure that's there. The treasure that's there. Yeah. Because when God builds, he only uses unhewn stones. So that means, and th this is why sometimes, you know, I'm saved, but I really can't find my place. I'm saved, but it, it's, it's like I don't fit. Well, you're still a brick. <laughs> there, there has to be this not only a healing process, but a sanctification process to break off the miry clay because until you get that miry clay off, none of us know who we really are until we discover who we are in Christ alone. And God's getting ready to release anointing, I believe, yes. to break that off. Yes. And, and part of that is the, the potter's wheel because when, we're, when Jeremiah is prophesying, Mystery Babylon had come into the place to where the people of God no longer resembled the people of God. Mm -hmm. They were pagan through and through. It was so bad, guys, that God, through the prophet, said, I'm tired of your feasts. Not the feasts of the Lord, but they had put so much pagan stuff in it that they no longer resembled the feast that God gave. Mm -hmm. Because all the feasts were about Jesus. And by adding these other things to it, they were marring the prophetic image of Christ that was embedded in those feasts. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean that's the, I mean that's the reason Moses didn't get to go into the Promised Land was because he marred the image of Christ in the rock mm, by striking. Yeah. The first time, the, the the it was struck and water flowed out of it because he was only going to be struck once. He only gives his life once. Mm -hmm. The second time that Moses comes to it, God says, "Don't strike it." Speak to it because after it was struck, how do we get not water now? We speak to the rock. It's called prayer. We claim his promises. We claim right. his word. That's right. And Moses, out of his frustration with the honoriness of the people of God, and that's why I think sometimes we need to give pastors a little leeway. Uh, there's, there's been times I, I think that a lot of pastors have been pushed to the breaking point by sheep acting like goats. Mm -hmm. He struck the rock the second time. Now, you know, yes, God did give water and all this stuff, but he said, because of what you have done, uh, you can't enter into the promised land. That image is so important. When God begins to restore, he's got to remold. We got, we got to get rid of the, not only the cracks and the, and, the, and the abuse that the enemy has done, but we have, we have got to Remove the image of the dragon, which is revealed in the iniquity force. That it's, sinful nature. It's a gentle it is. molding. It is not like the enemy does. He breaks, no. he, he forces, he uh, moves like a butcher. And He'll, Almighty yeah. God moves like yeah. a shepherd. <laughs> well, that, that's why the, the old thing, and I, I've told the story before, when the guy went over to Israel and he was so anxious to see how a shepherd would do. Mm -hmm. And he looks out his, his hotel window and there's this guy with a shepherd's staff, and he's yelling at the sheep, and he's striking at the sheep, and, and, and he's trying to get them into the pen, and they won't do it, and he's grabbing them by the hair and throwing them into the pen and everything. Really kind of ticked him off. You know, it's like, I've waited my whole life to go to Israel because I wanted to see how a shepherd acted. And so he uh, confronted the tour guide. He said, last night I saw a shepherd doing that. And, and the tour guide goes, oh, you're confused. That wasn't the shepherd, that was the butcher. Mm -hmm. You see, the butcher drives. Right. And the and, shepherd leads. Right. And so that's, that's a huge difference that is a truth that can break through the power of what yeah. the enemy tells you, the lies. And I remember when um, our basset hound was little, the first time I had to take her to the vet. You know, you put her in the crate, put her in the back, and she's going on the whole time. She's upset. What naturally came up in my spirit was I began singing to her. Mm. And immediately God brought up the scripture how he sings over us. Mm. You see, a shepherd, when he leads in the pasture, many times he would sing to the sheep so they could follow the sound of his voice. Right. And we, we need to understand the gentleness of our shepherd. Now, what gives God the right to remold? He's the creator. <laughs> You can trust the hands 
that have been nail pierced for you. Yeah. Because they paid a price to gently, and if you've ever seen a, a potter, it is, it, is, it is an art form. Um, you know, if I tried it, it would look like it was some distorted thing that came from Mars or something, you know. There, there, is, a, there is a gentleness to it. That he, it's very that, smooth when it, you watch them. Uh, they're, they're very, very gentle. And there's a right mixture of water, oil, the different things that they do. That they're, they're carefully because there, there is something in their heart that is, this is what this vessel is, this lump of clay is destined to be. Yeah, they already be. see it. Yeah. And, and so Satan had already marred who Israel was supposed to be, who the people of God were supposed to be. And Isaiah begins prophesying that God's going to put you back on the wheel so that he can do it. It's found in, in Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. And the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Rise and go down to the potter's house, and I will cause you to hear my words. And then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something on the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter, so he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look at the clay in the potter's hands, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. Now, God has formed us in our mother's womb. The Bible tells us that. And each one of us uh, was a chosen vessel, a vessel without flaw, and a, a vessel of beauty. And we, we even have terminology for it. We, have, we talk about how children are innocent. I mean, children are just precious. And, you know, I'm, I'm at the grandpa's age to where I can't see a baby in, in, the, in the store without going, ooh, look, Mary, uh, because they're, they're, they are just so innocent, so pure. And, but you can take a child like that and put them in a dysfunctional home, and it doesn't take long for that little spark to go out of their eyes. Now, they weren't formed that way. No. That's why, that's why we, within psychology, there's a, a lot that's talked about of environmental it's called environmental psychology, where they, that we are a product of our environment. Right. And, and to a certain degree, we're that way. But we also need to know that Satan saw to it that many of the vessels were broken. These vessels were designed by God to be vessels that would carry what humanity needed from God. Therefore, he broke them before God could use them to make a difference in the world. You see, each one of us have a place that once we get the miry clay of Babylon off of us to where that, that unhewn stone is, is, is reformed in us, then we have a place in the temple of God. The Apostle Peter said we are being built into a temple by living stones. Mm -hmm. And that we have that place. And we, we see that same imagery in Ephesians chapter 4 where it talks about how the body of Christ, that each one of us has something that supplies the rest of the body and it causes the body to function properly. That's right, because it, you know, it's like, it's like it, that's why it was so important on this election because, you know, most people can see um, the agenda that the enemy had for our nation. And so um, I believe God held back. Uh, I think it was a, a big combination of things that God did and people voting uh, to get this election where it was. But I've never seen the Christians pray like they have. We were fasting. We were praying. And see, when we come together and move like that, it's like it's mountain-moving faith. Because this was a mountain that they had yeah. been building for, for so long. But faith move the mountain. And so Satan doesn't want us to move together as one. He tries to cause strife and division even amongst the body. Um, and in my opinion, you know, with all the scandals that are going on, um, just you hear something new every day. But if we approach each scandal with God's love and compassion and pray that way, then Satan can't divide us with it. The key yeah. is walking in love. And what's, you know, what's interesting when we, we talk about a vessel, when God's trying to set the image, he puts it into a kiln. And if there's any, um, I think that's what you call it, a, a kiln. 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 Yeah. kiln. Okay. I, I didn't know what you were saying. Sorry. <laughs> 
I thought you said a cone. <laughs> I'm going to put you cone. in a cone. <laughs> Reminds uh, us of the old cone heads. Back I today. have not had enough caffeine yet this morning. Um, but if there's, if there's any Im impurities, it will cause the, the thing to shatter. And if God is, and I, I think God is restoring on two different levels. He's, he's restoring the individual if we'll work with him. And see, I, I, can, I, I completely trust God. If, if he wants to put me on the wheel because he's already paid the price. I look at the cross and said, you loved me this much so that as you're remaking me, I can trust those hands. Absolutely, because okay. it's loving hands. Um, but I also think he's getting ready to do it to the nation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, the first thing in remaking a vessel, the first thing that, the, that God must do is collect all the broken pieces. This is hard for many of us because these broken pieces represent our betrayal, our hurts, and our pain. But they must be brought back and dealt with if we are to be made whole. Uh, and I, I've seen that in my own life now. I, I think someone that has been traumatized, that is, that is a multiple, uh, you don't have to remember everything. That's, that's one of the things that we have, we have stressed. You do not have to remember everything. Not everything, but, but, but God the will Holy need Spirit. to show you that it happened or, yeah. or you won't be able to pray in faith. And, and the Holy Spirit will bring certain things to your remembrance very gently with the grace to overcome them mm -hmm. so that he can restore those pieces. And, you know, I find in my own life, as, as I'm going through this sanctification process, I'll have um, the Holy Spirit just very gently remind me of something, maybe because, well, I mean, we deal with oaths and sometimes we make them not even realizing that we make them. I'll never be like that. Uh, how many kids have done that with an abusive parent that grew up to be just like them, okay? And, and God would, would bring that up, but he would say, this is something you need to break. This is, this, is, mm -hmm. this is something that you need to let me in on so that I can begin restoring. What the, you know, there's a difference between God showing because there's always a grace there. It's in love. There's never any condemnation. No. What the enemy loves to do is, oh my gosh, God's getting ready to do a bunch of things. And so I can't let you see what he's doing. Uh, and, and the one thing he wants you to deal with, so I'm going to hit you with 60 of them. Mm -hmm. The enemy always overwhelms. overwhelms. And I, 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 there's, a, there's a tactic, because the, there's so much in the Bible that, uh, you know, that is legal. You know, we, we come before the bar of God. And the enemy is a prosecuting attorney. My, defer, my defense attorney is Jesus, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, and we, we've all seen it on TV where the, uh, where the legal team is asking somebody, we, we need this one document that you have. And so they give it to them, but it's mixed in with 50 cases of other stuff. And so now they, they've got to go through, let's say, 10,000 pieces of documents to find the one piece that they asked for. Mm -hmm. that, that's exactly the way the enemy works. Like it is. God is saying, listen. Mary, you, you need to be healed of this one thing so that you can hold the anointing that I'm getting ready to release through you at the next level. And so the enemy panics and says, I'm going to hit her every way but Sunday with everything but that. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we, we need to bind the enemy, saying the enemy's not going to show me anything. The enemy, that I, that I am only going to yield to the hands of Jesus, and I bind up the enemy. And I command him to get his hands off of God's property. Mm -hmm. Jesus bought me. He bought me with the price That's of his right. betrayal. And now, now he's going to pull back all the pieces. And I can trust him because his betrayal bought that field and bought me back. Well, I mean, there no greater love has there ever been no. than he gave his life. No. Then the potter begins adding water and oil to soften the hard brittle clay so that it can be worked together again. The water represents the word. Now, if you're going into the word and all you get is condemnation, then you're letting the enemy lie to you. The Holy Spirit will never condemn you. He will, he will convict you, well, for, but he will never condemn you. For a program multiple, that's why they use scripture. That's why um, a lot of times if you can... Um, learn the word without memorizing the where it's at it will help a program multiple because and, and, those that numbering was put in there by freemasonry and so a lot of times like that's why you'll hear people say oh god showed me uh you know one 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 uh you know this certain scripture three thirty three that uh that was put in there 
in the whole scheme of things, knowing what Satan was going to do, because then every time a scripture's read, it opens up something to either block you from hearing truth or kicks in something with that code on it. Because they're codes. That's, that's what people don't understand. If they, if they don't understand the programming, they won't understand what yeah. the, the... That's why like going to church usually doesn't help a program multiple because they're sitting there with everything getting opened up. And no, through no fault of the pastors. The, the pastors. No They're just teaching the word. But it's, can you see the setup? See, only Babylon could create that. Yeah. Only Babylon could create and a system to where the place you need to learn how to get free, they, they make a trap out of it. And all of the programming that we have seen, that I have at least seen, and all the reading that I have done, was all based on the King James Bible. And so by going now to... They might have done it with younger generations yeah. with other versions but it helped me to use the new king james now i know there's a couple of places in there that people have problems with um if you already know the the truth it it shouldn't mess with you but um the wording helped like before if i'd try it was always the king james version and i i just couldn't do it i'd yeah. have such pressure on the back of my head and so once i started getting healed i, I think you bought me one mm -hmm. and uh and so that helped. You yeah. know, the, God didn't give him these teachings just for me. He, he gave the, him these teachings so as I can give you the testimony of the incredible um, healing process that God took me through, he can share those, uh, these teachings with you. The people that got helped that were programmed multiples took what these teachings and, and went with them. But God will, what I've seen over and over and over is he tries to uh, put an offense or something to where they won't listen to these teachings. And I'm not saying he's the one that's got all the answers at all. I'm just saying I just God, was just, God, showed me. God was just pouring things out for him in my healing process because yeah. it just... It was just making it easier. You know, what I needed to hear. I needed to have that potter's wheel thing broken, and I needed to have the truth in there. And so, um, you know, we, he's got a lot of uh, free teachings at uh, our website. Yep. And so if, if you are struggling, there's a real good opportunity to take one of the teachings that God helped me get healed with that he gave him. Because it was... You know, the way I look at it is, I don't even think we've started on part of our ministry, believe it or not. I, I was just waiting to see, okay, which way are we going to go? I like to do it before I need a cane to walk around That with. would be nice. <laughs> but I was waiting to see, okay, are we, are we going to get enough people to pray that we can go a, a better way and get more done? Because otherwise, that was part of the reason that I was, I was playing in the kitchen here and all these things is, man, we're just going to be feeding people. And I knew that I had faith that God had provided us whatever we need to feed people uh, but I think it's going to go a better way. We may have need of that someday in that way. But for right now, I believe that, that I, I can um, testify of the healing power of God, and he can testify the truth of the word. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, one, one of the things I, I share with the, with the Bible um, is new, you know, stick with those that are transliteral. Mm -hmm. uh, new King James, New International Version, uh, I like the Net Bible, the New English Translation, and uh, one. Of th and if you if you if you can get it, if you can read the smaller print, uh, they have one with all the notes. And I mean, lit. You know, the, whenever you open up a Dake Bible, it's all, you're almost overwhelmed with the notes. This is just translator's notes, so that we know why they translated it the way that they mm -hmm. did. Uh, for me, I mean, that's you know, I, I like more input. I, I, I want to know and I want to see. Um, and those that have uh, spent time, I know that Dr. Michael Heiser was really big on the NET Bible, and he lived in the original languages. He had his PhD in, in all Semitic languages. Mm -hmm. uh, the, some of the ones to stay away from uh, are the ones that are paraphrased, because, it, and, and every once in a while, you know, I can look at like the uh, New Living Translation, Living Translation. There are certain verses, I mean, they absolutely. Uh, hit the nail on the head so good that they drove it through the whole board. And sometimes they couldn't find the board with both hands. It's like, what were you thinking when you translated that scripture? Uh, and, and the main main help is somebody that goes back to the Greek and Hebrew. Greek and Hebrew. I, I, I just about live there anymore. Uh, but I, I do love and uh, the difference between the King James and the uh, New King James is we have more manuscripts than they did. 
uh, with it. In fact, we, everybody always talks about the Texas Receptus for the Greek, but what they don't realize is that the guy that was putting the Texas Receptus together didn't have a complete Greek manuscript. They, they just wasn't available. And so he actually went to the Vulgate Bible, translated it from Latin, and made his own Greek verses, stuck them in there, and called it Texas Receptus, and we began translating it from it. Uh, I, I, I'm just blown away at a miracle that God, by His divine yeah, providence, maintained it. <laughs> has maintained His Word over the years. Uh, but the water represents the Word. The Bible says that where Jesus said in His great priestly prayer in, in um, uh, John chapter 17 that we are sanctified by the washing of the water of the Word. And we, we need that. This, this is our spiritual food. Okay. And the oil represents the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we, we need to learn both soak in the Word and soak in the presence of God. And guys, especially when you're going through the healing process, you're going to need to spend some more time just in prayer. And let God minister and, to you. And let God minister yeah. to you and, and just say, I'm here. And there may be, there may be times of silence, there may be times... Uh, you know, I, I have found that what helps me in, in my own prayer life is the times that I'm quiet. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've already prayed everything I need to pray. And then, then you know, it, it's like you and I get in a conversation. I talk to you straight for 20 minutes and hardly take a breath and I get up and walk away. And you're thinking, well, I had this whole list of things I wanted to talk with you about. You know, uh, we, we need to give God a time to speak to us in the Word and, and, and just uh, speak to us in general. One of the tactics of the enemy is to get you to run. Yeah, he, he doesn't, you know, like usually if in the healing process, this is where people don't understand it. Sometimes if you're getting healed and God's bringing stuff to the surface, sometimes it feels yucky when it first starts. You know, when something comes up that's been put in there, especially if it's sexual abuse or something that is, it's got horrible feelings with it, shame, just yucky. You just think, well, this can't be God. And so you run from it. And I can tell you from my experience, you have to go through that yuck, knowing that on the other side of it is healing and relief. Yeah. And what I've seen people do is instead of just just sit there long enough to get through it, they run, they run, they find this place to go, they go over here. They just will. Do, I've seen people it's, do it's it for years. It's a Babylonian tactic of distraction. Yeah, just just do anything to where you won't have to deal with it. Just run, run as fast as you can. And the truth is, is you got you got to find a place of peace to sit there long enough. Yeah. Ask God to give you the strength to endure. He will, and knowing that at the end of that, you know it's it's like if you go to the, who who likes going to the dentist. And sometimes you know for some people it was horrible, like me. But it's just never pleasant. But you know if you get to the end of that, it's a good thing. Yeah. You're going to have fixed teeth, strong teeth, and it's it's kind of like that. You've got to look at the end goal. Yeah. I think one of the most profound statements as I was making my notes way back then was this. God was not the one that broke us. Mm -mm. God was not the one that broke us. He wasn't. But He's the only one that can restore us. Mm -hmm. And so we must learn to completely yield to His gentle hand. He is wanting to work out the impurities that we picked up in the field of the broken vessels. He also wants to work out our underlining attitudes and perceptions. There, there is a process of saying, okay, God, I, I look at what you, you, you've saved my soul. I, I see what you did. You went, I, I see what you did for us on the cross. Therefore, I can trust you. So I'm going to yield to you, not to man, not to any man, but to you. And this is one of the things I stress. If, if you're underneath a minister that you can't hear the voice of God in, if you can't hear God's voice and his voice, you need to find some place where you can. Okay, because I mean, there's a lot of junk being taught today that God's voice is not in no, it. No, it's not. Um, and I've also found, guys, when I'm on the potter's wheel and he's working with me, I may look funny to everybody else, <laughs> you know, because when when God's working working out some things, and uh, there's there's an old scene in Inner Space with uh, Mar Marty Short where they, they made him look like somebody else, and he's getting so nervous, and his face is all distorting and stuff. I mean, it's hilarious. Mary, there's been a lot of times when God's working on me, I feel like that's when I look to everybody else. <laughs> you know, because, but it's, it's, it's a time of, of, of I'm, I'm being taken from a brick, 
and getting all of Babylon off of me to, to the image that God really has for me. So there's going to be some reshaping in my life. <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, when you they take shorts out of these podcasts and they'll put a short on there, guaranteed they're going to put one of them on there with that face. <laughs> well, I'm going to go through it to make sure. <laughs> And Dr. Lake said, <laughs> <laughs> um, but guys, that's the way sometimes you feel. And you're, you're also going, um, there, there's a spinning on the wheel. And, and what I want to bring in on that, in, in, in the process of God remolding you, you can't see God all the time. Well, God doesn't spin you. No. It's, that's just the, that's that's a, metaphor. A, a picture. Yeah. But he doesn't spin you. But, but it's, a, it's a similar process because gentle hands molding. Yeah. But what you can feel, because I think sometimes in the process, it's like, I don't know where he's having me go, and I, I'm not sure what he's doing. And, you know, sometimes I, I, can, I, can, I can see what he's doing, sometimes I can't. But what I can always feel are his gentle hands around me. Well, and, and you know, a lot of people will, like, I can hear it. Like, some people are going to watch this, and they'll say, well, well, why doesn't God stop this? Or why doesn't God do this? If he's a good God, why do and I'll tell you what helped me more than anything was God showed me the two kingdoms. Yes. And, and seeing the two kingdoms was one of the greatest helps to me that I'd ever seen because the kingdom of God is established. The kingdom of darkness, the enemy makes as the counter to that. God already laid out his commandments. He already laid out exactly how to stay within the safety of him, within the everything that you need. He laid it out already. And so, and you can see in the Old Testament, the reason that God reacted the way he did is he was trying to preserve the bloodline that our Savior was going to come from so that we could be saved. Yes. And so when you start seeing how God works and how he operates, what did Jesus leave us with? He left us with the authority um, to overcome the enemy. Yeah. And so a lot of times it's, it's situational. It's things we can't see. It may look like, well, God, you should have done this. There's times that in the past I can look, you always can look back and see things clear. I look back and I think, well, God, I was praying this. I'm sure glad you didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And well, so. And, and, you know, we, I think we almost need a word from our sponsor here in the middle of all this, though, because we need to remember when God created everything, he put Adam in a perfect paradise. Mm -hmm. That was God's will. He gave him commandments. He gave him authority. And he gave him everything that he needed for whatever was going to lie ahead of him. And I've, I've written so much about this. But it was man that invited in chaos. God didn't do it. Right. And see, that, that, that's why the, the splendor of the cross and why I can trust these hands. God did not let the devil into the world. Humanity did. Mm -hmm. It wasn't God's fault. No. And he's, he's orchestrating all the time to try to get you to safety, yes. to try to get you to make decisions to where the blessings can flow. And, and I can see it so clear. Um, and so when, when you start thinking, you know, well, I just don't know if I can trust God. Yes, you can. Trust God. Because everything he's doing in your life, if you're already saved, he's trying to get you in those protective walls of the kingdom. Yes. If you're not saved, he's trying to change everything around you to make a path to salvation. And that's pretty clear cut. <laughs> and I think one of the things that the Spirit of God just brought up, and when he, why does God need to restore us? As long as I'm letting the past govern what I do in the present, I'll never be free of Babylon. Right. I'm no longer a slave. I'm a son. I'm a daughter. Mm -hmm. And I've got, I've got to be freed. I mean, that's, that, that's one of the reasons why God gave the Torah to Israel after they were brought out of Egypt, because as long as they, as long as they still thought as slaves, they could never handle freedom. Mm -hmm. But only when they renewed their mind to the Word of God to begin thinking like a citizen of the kingdom See, that's, that's what he's trying. He's trying to take us from a slave to a citizen, a slave to a son or a daughter. And, and he said, listen, if, if all God wants is good, and he's paid the price for something he didn't do, we did, and yet at the, at the very beginning he shows up and says, I got this. I'm, I'm going to send a redeemer. That's that dragon that did that. 
He's going to bruise his heel. But let me tell you something. That Messiah is going to crush his head. Mm -hmm. Okay? At the very beginning. And so I, I can trust him. And, and so as, as long as I can feel his hands, we, we need to understand that we are never out of God's loving gaze. No, he's always watching over us. And I, and I have wondered, and, and this kind of gets theological, but you know in the book of Revelation it says he will wipe away every tear. I have wondered if the final tears that God wipes away are not his own. The Bible talks about grieve not the Spirit of God. How many times has God been trying to restore us that we didn't have, we didn't have that trust there and, and we pulled ourselves out of his hands? And it caused this to happen, and this happened, and this to happen, which was never what God intended, but, but our, our own rebellion caused these things. How many times has God, with tears in his eyes, had to pull us back and to bring us back to where he could put his hands around us and his arms around us again? That that's why I need to yield to him. And then once, he, and once we get into this restoration process to where every piece is restored, that we're now in the form that God intends, that form has to be locked in, and that's done through the, the heat of the furnace. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of the Bible talks about when Jesus, this, the, 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 uh, the parable of the sower sows the word, and immediately the enemy comes in to steal yeah. that which was sown. God is, is saying, listen, if we do this thing right, even when the enemy comes in to test, to see if what I've done is you and real, if you hold on to me in that whole process, and just keep holding on mm -hmm. to me, I'll lock it in to where the enemy can never yeah, change it again. Right. Because, you know, it's, it's like this. This was, this was forged someplace and molded someplace. Now, I can try everything I have unless I took a sledgehammer to it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to change its image. Right. And only God could take us from the broken image the enemy had mm -hmm. through, the, through the word and through the presence of his spirit to make us polyable again where he could remold us. And then he says, listen, you're going to need to be tested, but my, my, my desire here is to set this new shape that you're in in permanent so that now you're a proven vessel. That's right. And so we, we need, because we, somehow or another, we've bought this lie that if I'm doing the will of God, everything's going to be great. There are going to be no giants. Well, then David really missed it. There are, there are not going to be any enemies. Then all, all the characters in the Word of God really missed it. What I have found and what you have found is when the enemy is leaving me alone, I'm going to let you in on a secret here. It's because you're in his clutches and you're doing what he wants. And so he's going to leave you alone to make sure that he doesn't push you into God. But I'll have resistance when I'm actually doing the things of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's going to resist getting to where we need to be. Yeah, it's, yep. that's, it's his goal is if you're saved is to get you to where you can never fulfill what God designed you to do. And so I, I, th I think we're going to see this on two levels. If we will just simply yield to God, God's going to bring us to a place to where we can really be used of him in the days ahead. Mm -hmm. At the same time, Mary, we as a nation... God's getting ready to grab up a lot of the broken pieces where they have discarded the Constitution, they've discarded the Word of God, they have discarded the, uh, the Judeo-Christian heritage that founded this nation. Right. And, 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 and so there's, there's, and there's going to be a battle on both sides of this entire part process. That's but that's not all of it. Where people miss things is where the Freemason line came in. Yep. And that's got to be dealt with too. Because we're, that's a, a bad foundation that is embedded in with the real one. And so we've got to, to pray that God remove that so that, that we can get back online. Because yeah. everything that they've built is a, a, a place where Satan can work to steal your money, to make your health worth. Look at what they've done to our food. This, this, we've really got to pray for RFK Jr. And one of the things I'm praying over him is that the curse that was upon the Kennedy line that people talk about all the time, that God would forgive sins that place that curse in there. Yes. Whether it was a witch that did it or something on their family line, we ask God to break that curse so that um, the demonic power cannot work to have him taken out or even by sickness or something, we, we, we can break that 
by the blood of the lamb and we ask God to put protection around him because what he's doing and the team that'll work with him is going to give answers on how to make it if you've had a COVID shot, how to make it if you've, uh, if the food you've eaten has your, overwhelmed yep. your body, you know, and there's, and the good news is, is I, I saw a long time ago, the anointing that will be there to restore after this thing's torn out. We're getting so close. So, so I, what I ask God today, and I don't want to interrupt, but, no, no. uh, I ask him to start to pour out the spirit that he showed me that was, was after this is torn down ahead of time. Father, our people are overwhelmed. Father, their bodies are, are in such a shape from the attacks of the enemy that they can barely go. I'm asking for you to do a miracle, Father, and to pour out a, a portion of what you've got planned in the future right now. I ask that every person that's, that's, that's listening, Father, that your, your spirit is going to work. Your spirit's going to move. Father, if they're in desperate need for finances, Father, and the enemy's stolen everything they have, I'm asking you to make a way. I'm asking you, Father, if they're sick in their body, that there be such an, a, a healing anointing that is released, Father, that it begin to just work in their body right now, right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I just ask for emotional hearts that they would be healed. Yes. There's so many things, Father, that I see in the future, and I'm just asking for an outpouring starting right now. For your great name, Father, we will give you all the glory. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. The thing that we need to realize, because we're dealing with a lot of different issues, the breaking of a nation, the breaking of an individual. Now, the breaking of an individual, we've dealt with it on two levels. Number one, um, those that have been shattered through satanic ritual abuse, sexual abuse, whatever, are more highly broken, but the truth of the matter is we're all broken vessels. Yes, all in of one us, way or another. In one way or another, all of us are broken to a certain degree. And God is, God is getting ready to get into the healing process. And I think once we're healed, then we can, then all this stuff isn't there, and we can really learn the Word because uh, I think a lot of the garbage that's being um, propagated through mega churches and YouTube and everything else is taken advantage of because people don't know the word. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why cults have proliferated so much, whether it's you know Jehovah Witnesses knocking at your door, or whatever. They're counting on you not knowing the word. Mm -hmm. the, the antidote to error is truth. And the more truth that I know and the more I'm established in the word of God, <coughs> understanding the character of God, the harder it is for the enemy to deceive me. Mm -hmm. You know, how many times have we been, and I really have a hard time watching Christian television, where there's like a, a handful of people I watch. How many times have I been yelling at the TV, that's not what the Word of God says, that doesn't line up yeah. with the character of God. And I mean, I've, I've got steam well, shooting out let's my Let's be honest, a lot of it's to make money. Yeah. It's so sad, but that's, that's the truth. It's, it's building evil empires and to lead people astray. You know, you can't, the last thing I think we need to be focusing on is money. <laughs> People. You know, it takes money to do things. I'm not saying that churches don't need money, but this thing has gone to a level that is absolutely ridiculous. It is. And it's always about people. Because it doesn't matter how big the buildings you have, and, and you, could, you could have state-of-the-art uh, everything. But unless you're actually transforming people to make them conform to the image of Christ, you're a failure. Right. Because that, that's, that's what all of us are predestined to do. Right. Every, everything else besides that is gravy. Mm -hmm. But I, I, when, 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 oh, I want to go back here in a second. I want to, I'm going to bring up, in, in Romans chapter 8, you know, it says, and I want to read this again, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, but I want to keep on reading, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren. Mm -hmm. You see, when you get family together, they all look alike. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen some of them come in here at these these conferences we have. we've had. <laughs> they, you can tell that, oh, that yes. that's a brother, that's, that's a cousin, it. because that's I it. can see the family resemblance. Yeah. You either look like the devil or you look like Jesus. That's, a, that's all there is, and there's this kind of amalgamation of of two distorted images sometimes when, when you're not completely free and through the process. 
But the, I am predestined that by the time I stand before Jesus, I look like family. I love that. Everything else doesn't matter. I and if, if I can just get that now, if I can get that here, then who he is can flow through me and I've got a ministry. Mm -hmm. I've got a purpose. I'm flowing in the kingdom. Right. You know, it, uh, the, the seven sons of Sceva thought they could go and do stuff and, and, and cast out demons in the, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. And that demon says, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but I don't know. You know what that, that demon was saying? I can't see the image of Jesus yeah. in you. Therefore, I have nothing to yield to. All I see is my kingdom in you, and I'm about ready to whip you from one end of the, uh, the city to the other. And that's exactly what he did. We are, are, are all of us, that's why this restoration process is going on. Mm -hmm. The enemy came in, he snuck, and he did, he did this stuff. Yeah, we're getting ready and to God see says, it turned around. <laughs> you're going to look like family when I get done with yeah, you. You're yeah. going to look like family. Then we'll be having family reunions. <laughs> yes, we will. Well, Father, today in the name of Jesus, Father, we ask that you, for every one of us, that you begin this restoration process. And we command the devil, you get your hands off of God's property. That the only hands that are allowed on our lives is the hands of the living God. And we can trust those hands because they're yes, nail-pierced yes, hands. Yes, we can. We can trust this word because it's a living word. We can trust the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it is the Spirit of the living God. And Father, we declare before you, we trust you. And we yield to your purposes. Restore your image in us so that Jesus might receive yes. glory, we ask. In Jesus' name. We love you, family. Praying See you guys you. next week. Be blessed. In the ancient plains of Shinar, an evil was born. The first world king, the prototype transhuman, the ultimate despot, Nimrod. In Babylon, the son of perdition devised the Shinar Directive, a plan to enslave humanity and make war against the God of Heaven. God's intervention at the Tower of Babel only delayed Nimrod's hellish plans as the powers of Mystery Babylon gather to create the new Tower of Babel and to prepare for the Son of Perdition's return, Heaven is issuing a clarion call to the remnant. The Shinar Directive will reveal the strategies of the enemy that will help you untangle yourself from them and become the victorious church. It is time for the remnant to wake up, discern the times, and be infused with Heaven's power to withstand the Shinar Directive by Dr. Michael Lake. Get your copy today at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the Kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.